What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome to the Marquinhos uh, Daily Knockout Tournament. Of course, we have won Marquinhos, otherwise we wouldn't be here today. So we have him first owner, his card is very, very good. I was talking to Marshall about him earlier. Yep, he's six foot, which is a problem for some, and medium, medium, which is a problem for others. But his card for a winnable team of the season is outstanding now before we go into this guys if you could drop a thumbs up it would be very much appreciated Marquinhos coming in with the 81 pace 94 defending 90 physical if you put an anchor on him he becomes a 98 in-game center back 98 rated and of course he gets perfect link with Maxwell he gets perfect link with Thiago Silva he gets a strong link with um with uh I can't remember who can't remember who I was thinking of uh, like Matuidi and uh, Ben Arthur what a card, what a card. And if you actually put the perfect link of him and Thiago Silva together in a centre back, you just you just you're just looking for a good time, really, aren't you? So we did win Marquinhos. What team did we do it with? Well, I did it with a full team of the season League One team. As per Sigurdsson, Pulisic, and Rudy. Well, Rudy, I didn't do a most consistent team of the season, but for Pulisic and Sigurdsson, we did teams respective to the league. And there's no different here. Now, although this is a full team of the season uh, team, two of the cards are purple, not blue. They're exactly the same as the team of the season. I had these ones in the club. There was no point going to get anything else. So Cavani and Mbappe are the first two. And yes, I am playing Mbappe off cam at left forward. He will be fantastic. So in at goal, guys. In at goal, we come in with... Your main man, Subasic, 91 rated, very well-rounded stats, 92 diving, 90 uh, handling, 93 re reflexes, 93 positioning, and 88 kicking, and at six foot three is not a bad height. He doesn't have the giant throw. I believe he does have long throw, um, but uh, if, you, if you require giant throw like I usually do, he's not going to be good for you, but I, I think he looks like a very, very uh, solid keeper. And then in at the rest of the defense, we're going with Pereira, at right back. The two centre backs to start with were Thiago Silva and Perrine and the left back was Mendy. Now the left back not ideal um, but not the worst but uh, Pereira coming in with a really big card. I gave him Sentinel chemistry style, that four star weak foot, the high high work rates. What a dude and you'll note he's only got three games instead of four and one red card. I did get him sent off. The gameplay today guys is fantastic. Fair enough. Um, but Pereira's got a ridiculously good card. You might want to put anchor on him if you really need that 99 pace. I think 95 is more than sufficient. So 95 pace with the Sentinel Chem style on him just boosts his stats very uh, very cleanly for me. Good dribbling, good passing, very well balanced. Thiago Silva, of course, an absolute machine. Very similar in many aspects to Marquinhos. When you compare them, considering he's five ratings higher, Marquinhos has one more pace, two less passing, the same physical and the same dribbling. And only four less defending. Yes, he's got 20 less shooting, but when is that really going to be relevant? Now, of course, with Thiago Silva, you get a defender who is also only six foot, but has high high instead of medium medium. And that could be an issue for people as well. But eventually, if you have this centre back pairing, wow. Yep, they're a little bit short. You just don't concede crosses often in this game, so I don't think it's a problem. Uh, Perrin as well, coming in at, at 5'11", another short centre-back, medium, medium work rates, another centre-back with not the most ideal work rates, but a very, very good card. He's one point away from club 80, 79 pace, 94 defending, and 93 physical. I would recommend an anchor chem style if you're not overly bothered about pace, although he's already like rapid at 79 start, starting pace. Or a shadow if you really, really need that pace boost. Very nice passing and dribbling. Very nice shooting. And just an all-round beast card. Mendy, one of the weaker defenders in the lot. Uh, he's, he hasn't really got stats of a team of the season card. Uh, you know, 6-1 high medium. Not too bad for a left back. Three-star weak foot, very nice. Not the most pace. Not the most defending. Not the best passing. Pretty average dribbling for a fullback. Okay physical. Like, he, he really is a bang average player. Um, he goes for so much, I think, just because he's the highest rated left back in the league. But generally speaking, uh, he's just a, he's a very, very distinctly average player. That is the defence, guys. Now, for the player instructions, of course, we go stay back while attacking on all the defenders. 
into the midfielders now, guys. And we start off with two absolute monsters in Cyprien and Toliso. Uh, Cyprien has got a few in-game stats I wasn't overly keen on. Um, but generally speaking, he's very, very well-rounded. I gave Menjin a boost that pace, boost that passing, boost that dribbling, make him nice and nimble on the ball, nice and quick. High, medium work rates, 5'11", 3-star, three 3-star. Three Although he's got very good defensive and physical stats, he's not a defensive-minded midfielder. And Toliso coming in on the other side with high, high work rates, which... Uh, I think is a very, very good for a central defense mid, a central midfielder slash CDM, especially of Toliso's caliber. I've again given him engine to boost that pace, dribbling, and passing, but I could understand people that give him anchor or shadow just to boost that pace up into the high 90s and that defending also up into the high 90s. He becomes a club 90 player with the uh, shadow chem style. But as you can see there, I've got him on uh, on the engine chem style. And then our third and final centre midfielder is going to be Buda Booz. So we've got like a a nice kind of um, a nice a nice mix of midfielders. A lot of good defensive qualities in Cyprien and Toliso. Uh, no medium high work rates, but it's not the not the worst. And Buda Booz coming in at medium low there. Again, another engine chem style. No good defensive qualities on Buda Booz, but dribbling, shooting and passing is very nice. Pace is also very nice for a centre midfielder. And his physical is also pretty decent. And coming in with that four-star, four-star just rounds off this midfield. And then last but not least, guys, up at right forward, we have got Tovan. And Tovan has a phenomenal, phenomenal card. Five foot ten inches tall, high medium work rates, the four-star skill moves, very nice indeed. I put a hawk on him, but again, you could probably put an engine on him. Uh, you know, an engine boost that par passing and dribbling if you want to boost physical. This is just a great card. 400,000 coins for this card. Very good indeed. And then for Cavani, uh, he obviously a uh, very nice card indeed as well. And Mbappe, even though he's only on 7 chem here, he is still a phenomenal, phenomenal card. His card reminds me so much of Fernando Torres's uh, premium SBC card. So for the midfield guys, the player instructions, everyone is just set to stay back while attacking. Everything else is default. And for the attack, all of them are set to stay central, get in behind and press back a line for all three. Now for the custom tactics, I've actually taken many Bob's tactics of the last two weekends that he's had success with. We've gone for 75 speed. I already had 75 speed and 50 passing as my own default thing. Um, but I took his uh, passing, crossing and shooting. He reduced his passing, reduced his shooting, but improved his crossing. And I put my positioning to free form. Pressure reduced a little bit. Aggression nice and high at 60. Team with down at 56 in the defensive line at cover. So that, guys, is the team. Let's get into the gameplay. Okay, guys, so as we go into the gameplay, the first opponent we come up against has got a 182 433 team. He's got a Calcio A team, a really nice attack with Inform Insigne, Inform Gomez, and Inform Salah. His defense, very quick, very good, very overpowered. Manalas, Koulibaly, Perez, and Alexandro. His midfield, probably one of the weak points of his team. Now, of course, I understand I am coming into this game with a very, very strong team. I'm coming into the daily knockout tournament with a very strong team. You don't typically come up against super teams like mine in the DKT, or at least over all the games that I've played in the DKT. I really haven't come up against teams quite as good as mine. Um, obviously, the odd team here or there will be very nice, very overpowered, contain good cards. And one thing that I haven't really been seeing much in the DKT recently is stat cards. And that's nice to see. It's nice to see that people are just relying on their um, relying on their abilities rather than the boost of stat cards to, to require the wins. So we end up going 1-0 down to a, a kind of a lucky Sammy Kadira deflection. Uh, he took a shot, popped straight back to him. Uh, but I got back in the game with Tovan. I tell you what, Tovan was very, very impressive. I've used him a lot before, his informs, on my pack-only Road to Glory, just because I packed him on there and, and I thought he was decent. But this card is, is it's notably better than any card that I've used from him before. And just notably a, gr a very, very strong card. You know, like... You know, like sometimes you play with players, like you see the pros play with like players like George Best and Lionel Messi, and they they're just like, look, this guy is just better than any other alternative. Well, it, that's how it felt for me with someone like Tovan. He just felt very quick, very clean on the ball. The interaction between him and, and the animations he does, like they they were very clean, very quick, very sharp. You know, a fake shot, the ball would stay close to him, but it'd turn at pace. Second game, we come up against a guy with a very interesting team. He's got five silvers in there. Pulisic at centre midfield, he's got the skillers on Dembele and Costa, Renato Sanchez and Kalasnac at left back, an interesting team, definitely one that I looked at and thought man, I wouldn't like to lose to this team, you know, it's a 176 and, and many people would argue the fact that in this instance my 190 team, because my team rating is 190, my 190 team should lose to this team, 
because it's handicap, right? Handicap should kick in and my players shouldn't perform. I don't believe that that exists and, and I definitely didn't feel it if it did exist in this game. We end up going 1-0 down to quite a lucky deflected goal, much like the first game. I get back on terms with a nice Buda Boos goal from the free kick, Cavani laying it off. But other than Tovan, I was looking for other players that really impressed me. Uh, Cyprien, very, very impressive. He is like a, a Kante or a Nato Sanchez or a Seti style player. You know, he's just, just constant aggression and pressure. Just running around, buzzing around, winning tackle after tackle, time after time, and not being any worse off for stamina for it, really. Not until like the very end periods of the game. I don't know what his stamina levels are, but for the amount of work that he puts in, I was very surprised that his stamina wasn't lower quicker. But for me, the star man of, of this team was Edison Cavani. Um, I, I've, I've quite enjoyed this year in FIFA the big man, the Lukakus, the Ibras, the Lewandowskis, the, the Higuains, even to, to an extent the Ronaldos and the Bales, you know, the, the nice big tall uh, strikers with qu clinical finishing and a good weak foot. That's what I like in this game. Uh, and Cavani fits right into that role. Uh, he's absolutely rapid, like very, very fast, incredible finishing, very good strength. And I just really, really enjoyed him. So we go into the second second round, we get a rage quit. Into the semi-final, guys, and we come up against a guy with a real nice team. Team of the season, Kante. Player of the month, Son. Player of the month, Deli Ali. A nice attack with... Uh, he had Pjanic at Cam, but he actually brought Pjanic into centre midfield and put Hume Min Son up at Cam. Uh, and then he had Dybala and um, I think it was, was it Higuain. Uh, things went bad for me uh, early on in this game. I ended up getting a red card with Pereira there. I deserve red. Uh, you know, I slid in. I thought I could make the tackle. Didn't didn't make it in the end. And I, I thought that this was going to be the end of it. I thought this was going to be the end of the first attempt. I, I genuinely believed that I was going to require a second attempt at this tournament. Of course, the fact that you're watching means that I didn't. Um... I managed to come through this one, even though I went 1-0 down to a really good Hume Min Son finish and then a great bit of play on the edge of the box between Son and Dybala and a good finish. You don't expect your keeper to let in both of those shots. You would expect him to get a hand to at least one of those, but low drivens are just so overpowered in this game. I end up conceding two goals on the stroke of half time is where my fortunes kind of just turn around. Tolisso doing some good work into uh, Mendy. Mendy to, uh, well, eventually it makes its way to Cavani. I took the shot, it hits Bailly and flies into the back of the net. Now, I don't know if it was going in or not anyway. It was, it was a good shot choice from a good angle with a guy who has 99 in every shooting stat. I would have thought it would have gone into the top corner regardless, but the deflection was nice, favoured me very well. And I could feel my opponent kind of getting a little bit anxious. You know, his gameplay changed, like his, the style of play for him changed. He stopped doing just nice, safe, creative things and started doing panicky, just booting the ball clear and, and trying to like foul me on the ball and, and that, that kind of thing. And eventually I got back with a really nice Tovan goal to make it 2-2 and even took the lead here. Tolisso into Cavani. Cavani doing some good work holding the ball off. Plays a lovely little one-two with Mbappe. He gets into the box. He ran me a little bit wide, but I managed to still keep the ball. Played it into uh, Cyprien, who at this stage is actually playing right back for me. Cyprien slots it into Mbappe and Mbappe finishes that off to make it 3-2. So I thought, brilliant. I was at this point controlling the game, I was having the possession, the chances, I could feel my player was tilting, my opponent was tilting, but I gave away really silly possession, uh, 20 yards out from my own box, lovely little one-two on the edge of the box, and Miralem Pjanic is there to slap that one into the back of the net, a really good finish, and again, for me, the panic set in, because when you're 2-0 down and you start playing a different way, you're just like, yeah, whatever, like, if I can come back into this, great, and then I got 3-2 up and I was confident, I was playing really good FIFA, but once he pulled it back to 3-3, I was like, oh, God, I hope he doesn't, you know, all of a sudden he gains the confidence and he starts playing a bit comfortable again. But he didn't. He was still seemingly play on tilt. And it was only that one human error that was allowed him back into the game at 3-3. Ended up winning the game 4-3. You saw the match stats here. A dominate possession. I had one more shot than him. But in general, my shots were from much better areas and I had a much cleaner game. And even with 10 men, I found myself dominating a third consecutive game to make it 4-3. And then into the final, we come up against our first... I guess super team, our first proper real good team. Uh, he's got Hyung Min Son with attributes card, uh, Torre, Bai, and De Gea with attributes cards. He's got Smalling, Van Arnholt, Sigurdsson. He had, uh, you know, the striker Hazard. And this was a game that was just, it just symbolizes a lot of people's frustrations in FIFA this year. Uh, my own included. Uh, this was a game where I absolutely controlled it from start to finish. But for some reason or another, just could not seem to pull away. And this is where people have their concerns with FIFA as an eSport and with whether or not scripting, handicap and momentum exists. I get the first goal there with Tovan. Lucky deflection in the box falls my way. 
straight from kickoff. I do the offside trap because that's what you should do. You know, you should do the offside trap. It, it helps you defend against the the aids at, at kickoff. Didn't make any difference for me. He manages to get the ball through my midfield anyway. It falls to Eden Hazard. He slots it into Ericsson. Finds Sigurdsson. I've got three defenders around Sigurdsson, and none of them make any attempt to push and press for the ball. Even though my aggression is on 60, they just sat off. And then two minutes later, look at that. See what happened there with Perrin? This, that for me is the one of the biggest concerns in this game. Auto lunging in this game costs me many, many goals. It seems like there's a situation in the game where when the ball, if, if, you're, if your AI defender or if your defender auto lunges, and the ball's within auto lunge reach. It's like they won't auto lunge. They won't just stick a foot out and get that ball. But when it's not in reach, that's when they decide to lunge and try and get the ball. So for me there, Perrine, the ball went within a, a, a few inches of him. And that's where I would want the game, if auto lunging is going to be in the game, that's where I'd want the game to be like, oh, hey, there's a ball. Let me stick a foot out and trap that. But he didn't. He ended up... Um, he ended up just letting it run past him, my opponent scored. So that's quite frustrating, but I was creating more than enough opportunities to get back into this game. Not only did I get back into this game, I took a 3-2 lead. I missed countless opportunities going in towards the 90th minute, and then in the 88th or 89th minute, whatever that is, he pulls it back to 3-3. And I'm thinking to myself, just, I can't. I can't deal with this in, in the final. You know, I'm absolutely dominating. I'm pummeling him. I'm creating chance after chance after chance and it just won't go in the back of the net. I bought on my 98 Messi into uh, extra time because my team was just dead. Like the, the stamina levels of some of these players isn't ideal. And that might be a reason why people turn away from playing with these sort of players. You know, Tovan had to be removed in two games just because he didn't have the stamina level to, to, to kind of keep up. But eventually I create a really, really well-worked goal. Nice passing in and around the box. I found the space with Messi, slapped that one in. 105th minute, 4-3. I'm thinking to myself, that's it. I can't possibly concede another goal against this guy. Oh, but I could. He gets the ball from kickoff again, or two, two minutes after his initial kickoff. Again, the defence just kind of like statuesque. You know, they just stand around. He pulls it back to 4-4, four, four, hits me with a dab in the 108th minute. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking again, like, man, this guy's hit me with like four or five attempts only, and he scored from all the goals. If I concede another attempt, I might concede another goal. But the 120th minute, I finally get another really good opportunity with Messi. I score... And I think that that's going to be it. I think there's no way he's going to score a fourth goal from, you know, kickoff or within a minute or two from kickoff. Oh, but he does. Christian Eriksen here gets in behind. I try and I body him a couple of times. I tackle him once. He just manages to hang on to the ball with dear life and eventually gets that fifth goal that takes us to penalties. And you might be thinking, there's no indication here that you've bossed this. There's no indication here that you've dominated this guy. But... I will show you the match stats at the end. I end up missing my first penalty. He ends up missing his second penalty. So I, you know, I was get I, even uh, uh, you know after missing the first penalty, I was like, oh god, it's it's going to be one of those days. I nearly, oh, well, I hit the post with my second penalty. It hits his keeper and goes in. And then I started getting the the kind of feeling that okay, this might be going my way. You know, like he hit the post and it went out. I hit the post and then it hit his keeper and it went in. Eventually, I just kept keeping calm, just taking my penalties, hoping to guess right one of his uh, on one of his penalties and save it. He goes 3-2 up. Cavani steps up and pull that to 3-3. Uh, three, three. Lovely penalty. Even if he dived the right way, he would have dived over the ball. It's a beautifully tucked under the body penalty. I don't know how he put that in with Yaya Torre. Like, unbelievable penalty. Like, I, I, I would never try that myself. Eventually, score another goal, same direction, underneath the bottom right of the keeper if he dives. And then he steps up and I save his penalty. Six set penalty, Subasic saves it. So a, a goal here from Budabuz will end the penalty shootout and I scored it. So same direction again, bottom right hand corner. We end up winning Marquinhos in one of the most unbelievable finals ever. And so you're saying, like, let's see these match stats then. Let's see these match stats. Well, my Subasic, I think, made one save. His De Gea made eight saves. It's not really the telling of the whole story. When you look at the match stats, the dude had 39% possession, seven shots, five on target, five goals, and only 80% pass accuracy. I had 18 shots and 13 on target, only two of them coming from outside the box, and I just could not put... Well, it's not that I couldn't put the ball away. I put the ball away five times. I think that's a reasonable return of goals. It's just the fact that he also managed to score five goals from his seven shots. And that was what was quite frustrating. But guys, we achieved it. We got Marquinhos at the first time of asking. Very happy with that. This is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.